Okay, we've been practicing using this relationship to solve different forms of inverse Laplace transforms, and let's get some more practice with it. We have two more examples left. Uh, here we have the inverse Laplace transform of 4 divided by this quadratic term, s squared plus 4s plus 20, and then for this problem we have 3s minus 1 divided by the quadratic term s squared minus 6 times s plus 2. So let's start with this one first. And again, as was as we've done in the previous videos, we start off with the complete the squares technique. So we take half of that coefficient, and that will give us s plus 2 squared and we multiply that out, that's s squared plus 4s plus 4. So if we add 16 to that, it would give us that quantity right there. So we can rewrite the problem. We're going to take the inverse Laplace transform of 4 divided by s plus 2 squared plus 16. And here, remember now that the inverse of loss transform of a con some constant, say, divided by s squared plus that constant squared that's equal to the sine of c times x. That's what we have here. We've got a constant squared, and here, or here we have s squared. Here we have a constant squared, and there's a square root. Um, it's not s, it's s plus 2 that's being squared. So it sort of resembles this, but not quite. So we go back then, To our relationship, here we have s plus 2. So in this case, here we have s minus k, so k equals negative 2. So that we have s plus 2. So then this, the inverse the plus transform of that, will equal e, and in this case k is, is negative 2. So you have e to the minus 2x times the inverse Laplace transform of just f of s. So it's the same thing as this, except now the k term, or in this case 2, is gone. So we have the inverse Laplace transform of 4 divided by s squared plus 16. And of course, this is equal to e to the minus 2x times the sine of 4x. So for this quantity here, 4 divided by s squared plus 4s plus 20, the inverse of plus transform is e to the minus 2x times the sine of 4x. Okay, that was pretty straightforward. Hopefully by now um, you're getting more used to them. Let's take a look at this problem. So here we have the inverse Laplace transform of 3s minus 1 divided by s squared minus 6s plus 2. Um, let's go ahead and complete the squares. So half of that coefficient is 3, so we have s minus 3 squared, and if we do that, that will give us s squared minus 6 times s plus 9. And we want to have plus 2, 
So we would have to subtract 7 from that to get plus 2. So if we have s minus 3 squared, subtract 7, that will give us s squared minus 6s plus 2. So we'll rewrite the problem. Now we have the inverse to Foss transform of 3 times s minus 1 divided by s minus 3 squared minus 7. And we want to take the inverse of the Foss transform of that. Now, we have to be careful because here, when we're doing it, we have the inverse of Foss transform of s minus k. And here we have s minus 3, but here it's just plain s. So we have to rewrite the problem so that this rational expression has the form of s minus k. So we write it like this. This would be equal to the inverse Laplace transform of, let's do with the denominator first, s minus 3. squared minus 7 and up here we're going to have 3 times s minus 3. Now if I do that here then this is 3s minus 9 where it's supposed to be minus 1 so it would be this multiplied in parentheses plus 8. Now then we have 3s minus 9 plus 8 is minus 1. And writing it in this form, now we have the problem in an f of s minus k form, if you will. So now we can go ahead and apply our rule. So here then we would look at it, we would say, well, k in this instance is 3, so that's going to be equal to e to the 3x times the inverse Laplace transform. And here it's just a function of f of s. The k goes away. So in this case, the 3 goes away. And we have 3 times s plus 8 over s squared minus 7. like this. So now it's an f of s problem. When you use this relationship here, here we had f of s minus k, now it's just f of s once you multiply by e to the kx. For this problem, k is equal to 3, so when you multiply by e to the 3x, now it's having s minus 3, it's just s. And to the s minus 3 squared, it's just s squared. Now, we can break this up. This will equal e to the 3x times the inverse of the plus transform. You will have 3s divided by s squared minus 7. And the 3 is a constant, so we can just take that to the outside. And we would have s divided by s squared minus 7. Then we would have plus 8 over s squared minus 7. And we can take the 8 to the outside and do it like this. We will have 8 times the inverse the plus transform of 1 over s squared minus 7. Now, if we remember, here we have s squared minus something, s squared minus something, so obviously we're dealing with hyperbolic functions. This is a hyperbolic cosine, but here then, 
that this is going to be a hyperbolic sine, what is up here in the numerator has to be the square root of that. Or we can make it the square root of that just by multiplying by the square root of 7. Now if I multiply the top by the square root of 7, I have to divide by the square root of 7. That's a constant. Take it to the outside. So we have it like this. And now we're ready to go ahead and take our inverse Laplace transform. This will be equal to e to the 3x times 3 times the hyperbolic cosine of the square root of 7x. That's from this expression, plus 8 divided by the square root of 7, and this would be the hyperbolic sine of the square root of 7x. And that would be our answer. So again, we can break the whole problem up by using this relationship right here. So it's a very important one. It's a very useful tool for taking the Laplace transforms of certain types of rational expressions that before we would not be able to handle. And it's used very much in solving our uh, second order differential equations, especially. So we really wanted to have some practice with that technique. So we presented several problems using it and hope that was uh, helpful to you. And definitely come back and join us for some more videos and we'll solve some more problems.